Thank you very much, Steve. This is the Cyrus Telebridge moderator at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenville. Cyrus, the shuttle amateur radio experiment on STS-67 is using the Telebridge network. The Telebridge network is comprised largely of volunteer amateur radio operators performing a public service. The Sarex Telebridge allows the space shuttle crew to communicate with school groups around the world. We are using a remote amateur satellite ground station, patching through a telephone segment provided by Jerome Telecommunications in Chicago, and onto an amateur radio station set up right at the school. And that school participating is the Watson Elementary School in Huntsville, Arkansas, with oversight from the University of Arkansas and the University of Arkansas Amateur Radio Club. The contact person and call sign is Peter Laws. They'll be using the university's call sign, Whiskey 5, Yankee Mike, W5YM. The amateur radio ground station initiating the contact for the school is John Macca, Alpha Bravo 5, Sierra Sierra, but John is staffing the John Space Center Amateur Radio Club station in Houston, W5RRR, W5RRR. The volunteer AMSAT ref at uh, NASA John Space Center in Houston is John Nickel, WD5EEV. Uh, Houston, how copy Greenbelt? Loud and clear. John, could you please give us a uh, rise time mark? Okay, at my mark, it will be one minute and 35 seconds. Mark. Thank you, John. The call sign of the Orbiter Endeavor will be Kilo Charlie 5, Mike Golf Alpha. That's KC5MGA with pilot Bill Gregory at the microphone. Now, the orientation or attitude of the space shuttle tells us something about our our expected uh, radio link performance. And I'd like to ask uh, the DSR in Houston to please describe the SARX antenna location as well as the orbiter attitude. John? Okay, Pat. Uh, those on the net, the uh, antenna is located in window one, uh, which is on the left or uh, fourth side of the orbiter. Window one? Window one. Okay. And uh, the attitude is such that we expect uh, really acquisition uh, at rise, uh, a little bit scratchy perhaps, and then uh, we're little, looking for a, a good pass all the way through. Thank you, John. And uh, we are within a minute, so I'll remind all that this is an experiment, and the experiment results vary. If you're ready, then please respond accordingly after you're called. Huntsville, Arkansas. Ready. Over. Okay, I trust you're ready. The ground station, w 5 R. are you ready? We're go. And the CSR in Houston. Go for contact. This is the Cyrix Telebridge moderator in Greenbelt announcing we are go for the contact, handing over the ground station, w 5 R. Okay, Pat. Okay. KC5MGA, KC5MGA, W5, radio, radio, radio. KC5MGA, KC5MGA, W5RRR, now copy. KC5MGA, 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 W5RRR, now copy. KC5 
KC5 MCA, KC5 MCA, KC5 MCA, 75 RRR. KC5 MCA, KC5 MCA, KC5 MCA, 75 radio, radio, radio.
My name is Chris. What new experiments have you worked on as pilot of the shuttle? Over. Well, I've worked on uh, two for the most part. One is a protein crystal growth experiment that uh, we're looking for some clues on how to solve, uh, come up with a cure for AIDS and also for cancer, along with some other commercial uses. The second is a mid-deck active control experiment, which is like a vibrating gene that we're working on the mid-deck. In fact, I came up from the mid-deck to uh, talk to folks. I was working on it just a second ago. Over. My name is Megan. When you send a satellite into space, what keeps it from freezing? Over. Well, Megan, uh, in fact, up here, because we use electricity and uh, our equipment heats up, it's actually more of a problem of cooling things off than heating things up. When you're in the sun, you're basically about 200 degrees. When you're in the shade, it's about 200 degrees below zero. So the, the satellite has internal heaters which keep them warm when the sun's gone. And then when the, when the sun's up, you have cooling heat. Over. Well, I think it varies depending on uh, how you enter. I, I came here with a four-year uh, undergraduate degree, and I have two master's degrees, uh, and I'm, I'm one of the pilots. But we have some of the pilots that just have bachelor's degrees. So I'd say the minimum uh, would be four years. And of course, for the uh, back seaters, a lot of them have uh, PhDs, which will, of course, take much more time. And, and you get people who are from the field of medicine. So they got their uh, medical doctors, and that would take much longer over I'm Teresa. Why does the stars look like I'm Are they like a dot or a star shape? Over. Okay, well, uh, you must realize that we're actually only about 100, uh, right around 200 miles above the surface of the Earth, and so we're just outside the atmosphere. We're nowhere near very close to the stars. But uh, outside the atmosphere, they just look like ten points of light. Over. I'm Jenny. What if your payload specialist is unable to fly? Who does the job? Over. Okay, uh, we have two people who actually fly the vehicle, commander and uh, myself as the pilot. And we're both trained to land the vehicle. And if for some reason his control didn't work or if he didn't feel well, then I would perform the landing for the right to Over. I'm Richard. How do you get through the atmosphere without burning up? Over. Richard, that's an excellent question. The way we uh, approach that is we come through the atmosphere at a steep angle and we let the piles on the bottom of the orbiter uh, deflect most of the heat and they do a good job of inflating us. Then once we get uh, through all our, our questions once. Thank you very much, uh, Lieutenant Commander Gregory, for uh, basically making our day here at Watson Elementary uh, School in Huntsville, Arkansas. This is Whiskey Five, Yankee Mike. Um, I think you This is Whiskey Five, Yankee Mike. The applause was kind of loud, so I missed that last. Uh, this is Pat in Greenbelt. I picked up uh, Bill Gregory's salutation. He said thank you for the contact. And I also have a little packet racket on frequency. So it was a good contact. Uh, you did your homework real well, Huntsville. Uh, something to indeed be proud of. Over. Okay, Pat. Well, thank you very much from the folks here at Watson Elementary. Uh, you made a lot of kids real happy, and I think everything went really well. Um, we're ready for your uh, your post-contact questions whenever you are. Over. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I don't mean to rain on your parade, so I'll be very brief. Uh, let's see, is that Peter there or Jeff? Okay, this is Peter. Uh, I'm going to hand the microphone to Kevin. Uh, he's been sort of handling our press stuff, because I know you're interested in, in press coverage and whatnot. I'm going to take the kids off to a side room now. This is uh, Whiskey 5 Yankee Mike. Okay, thank you, Peter. And, uh, okay, Huntsville, Arkansas. How many questions were answered, please? We 
had 14 questions answered. Over. Very good. And how many uh, people total in attendance, please? I would say approximately 250. Over. Great. Thank you. Copy 250. And of those 250, could you please uh, approximate how many of those are students?
Okay, stand by one. Uh, Steve, I'll copy. Copy clear, Mr. Kilroy. Uh, we'll, we'll contact South Africa immediately, sir. Thank you. And then uh, let me just thank, uh, as Steve goes away there, uh, I'd like to thank Jerome Telecommunications of Chicago and uh, the current Jerome operator, Steve. I'd like to thank John WD5 Echo Echo Victor at the NASA John Space Center Sarek Room in Houston. I'd like to thank uh, John Alpha Bravo 5 Sierra Sierra, the amateur radio ground station in Houston at the JSC Amateur Radio Club W5 Romeo Romeo Romeo. And of course, uh, we must thank our AMSAT technical mentor for the school, and that was Terry Jones. And said, "Hey, Charlie, Terry worked with uh, the school in the weeks and months in advance of the contact, preparing them for the technical aspects." I'd like to thank Lou McFadden, W5DID, recently retired Sarex principal investigator, and Matt Bordelon, KC5BTL Bravo Tango Lima, the new Sarex principal investigator, Frank Bauer, KA3HDO, AMSAT Vice President for Manned Space Program, and the uh, certainly uh, WA3NAN Club Station at the Goddard Space Flight Center Amateur Radio Club, where they uh, retransmit very faithfully the air-to-ground uh, shuttle communications, and they were retransmitting this contact live across the nation and beyond. We'd like to thank the three sponsors of the Shuttle Amateur Radio Experiment, namely the American Radio Relay League of Newington, Connecticut, the Radio, Am the Radio Amateur Satellite Corporation, AMSAT of Washington, D.C., and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. We'd like to thank the family, the faculty, the community, and above all, the students, the students who are participating in SAREX. So this is the SAREX Telebridge Moderator at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt. We are closing this session of the SAREX Telebridge on STS-67 on Wednesday, March 15, 1995. And uh, it just turned one hour, five minutes, coordinated universal time, 0105 UTC. Again, congratulations to Watson Elementary School and their uh, big brother, in the University of Arkansas, uh, located in Huntsville, Arkansas. So uh, this is uh, uh, Pat Kilroy, WD8LAQ in Greenbelt, saying 73 to all. Thank you very much. This is W5YM from Huntsville, Arkansas.